All right. Let's go ahead and dive into this conversation that I've noticed in these last two years of the Triple H era. Hey, 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 Lil, welcome to the show. And this is where I'm at with it. I thought now that the big bad Vince McMahon has been moved and removed and, and ostracized and thrown by the wayside, that now that Triple H was going to come in and it was just going to be this whole new world of creative and we're just going to just be holding hands and everybody was just going to be like, huh? Ah. Hallelujah. That's not what it is, and that's not what it turned out to be. Outside of more international PLEs, which I think that's more accredited to Nick Khan and Endeavor, um, shortened PLEs, so you got your five matches, which I don't mind. I don't mind at all. Only difference is, only thing is it takes it takes opportunities from other people who are holding championships to be on a pay-per-view defending that championship because that's all we knew. The way Vince McMahon did it. Now, I'm going to use Vince McMahon. I'm take all, take all of the terrible shit Vince McMahon was doing and I have to juxtaposition it to Triple H. The first thing I could do, I'm just going to say 10 things that I don't care for in the Triple H era. Okay? 10 things. I probably could do 40, but we're just going to do 10. And the other things I'll talk about separately. Let's start from 10 up to 1. 10, leaning on to international audience for adulation. I did a podcast on that. Triple H loves to suck his own dick. Um, He comes out, everyone says... Triple H, we love you. Thank you for saving us. Oh, my God. We're getting bows. He is the man. Whoop, the whoop, the whoop. Are you ready? He gets to do that. Then we get the quintessential Stephanie McMahon pose. Like, hey, guys, I'm here. Don't beat on me. It's like becoming repetition. And for me, it's a little bit annoying. Vince McMahon didn't have to come out and let you know who running the show. We already know running the show. And sometimes... Triple H's booking as of late makes me scratch my head and wonder if Vince McMahon's back there. But I forgot. And that's one of the things that's coming up as to why I forgot. Because somebody's still there. And I can see that their influence is all over some of this SmackDown and uh, Raw shows. Number nine. No intros to new stars. They just come and go. Triple H... Seems to be having a difficulty introducing new stars. They just show the fuck up. Or they show up and then they don't show up for weeks on end and then they come back. I'm not understanding why that's going on. I will say Vince McMahon, he'll introduce the star. Except um, Veer. But he'll introduce the star and give it a couple episodes for you to get hold. And if it don't work, they're done. Triple H introduce a star, you don't see him no more for a couple weeks because he just dropped the goddamn story. Or they'll just show up on NXT. And it's like, what? Number eight, too many hands, not enough stars. Triple H has yet to make a star. He has yet to make a star. He hasn't even attempted to make a star. But he got his fucking kids all over the screen. And all those kids are jobbers. And none of them will ever be stars. They, they don't have it. I'm not even going to say Aura. They're just not fucking cool to look at. Indy Hartwell, Dick Face, Johnny Gargano, Candice LeCrae, all of the white six. Like, come on. Let's be real here. If you're going to try to push them people, push them properly. But Triple H ain't pushing them people properly. He's still booking like he's in NXT. And if you watch Triple H booking in NXT, it was extremely brooding and dry. And it was always the same people over and over again. Number seven, no side missions for wrestlers. Again, one thing about Vince McMahon is he had so much fucking going on on one show that it was jumbled and sometimes it was a mess. There is no jumbled mess because there's only one storyline on Raw and there's only one storyline on SmackDown. Now, we could argue, let's talk about Raw. The biggest storyline is the, um, what you call it, the Judgment Day. Outside of the Judgment Day, 
we've been saddled with the white six and American made and American alpha. Why? I don't fucking know because no one cares. Then if you go to SmackDown, you got the bloodline forever. And outside of that, for whatever reason, Grayson Waller and Austin Theory is being teased to break up. No one gives a fuck. Those are two good examples of storylines that probably should have some side misses. Grayson Waller, why he's figuring out if he's going to fuck over Austin Theory, could be somewhere fighting or just doing an expedition. Over on Raw... The Y6, well, I'm not even going to talk about them. You can have um, Alpha Academy figuring other things out. They don't have to keep going back and forth with American Made. We already figured out that Chad Gable done kicked them all in the ass. They can move on to something else, but they're not. Um, number six, long-form storytelling. I understand that Raw is the longest-running episodic television show in television history but here's the thing it's no end to some of these fucking stories they keep going Cody Rhodes and fucking um what's his name again Kevin Owens in my opinion there's nothing else left on the bone now you just plucking at the marrow Cody Rhodes could go in the back and start a whole new mission with some unsuspecting superstar that's back there. There's no reason why we got to keep rotating between Kevin Owens, Cody Rhodes, and Randy Orton. And Randy was like, I don't even want Cody's belt. I'm going to go over here and fuck with Gunther. That says a lot. Okay? And now Cody is forever intertwined with the bloodline to where he can't even function with anybody else in the background. That's not long-form storytelling. That's confusion. If you're going to tell it like the stories, if we use the Young and the Restless, you got over here, you got the spec, the, the, um, the, 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 what's his name? I forgot. Damn. You know what I'm talking about. You got that one story going with his, with Victor Newman and them forever. Then over there, they, they go from Victor Newman, they have that pause where they zoom in on the person's face, and then they go to another story and pick up where that story left off. And then they go to another story and pick up where that story left off. And then next week, you might not see the Newmans. You might see a whole group, a different group of people, so you can tell that story. The soap operas have seven different stories going at one time, but they rotate the stories every other week or every uh, every other every other day because the young and the restless comes on every day at 12 30 that's what i remember now i don't know if they're still on but when i was growing up every day at 12 30 the young and the restless my mother would turn it to the young and the restless that week we got the newmans and what they going through tomorrow we'll have what's going on with the with the spectras and all of them and then the next day you go back to the humans and that's how you tell a story you just don't sit and lock in on one shit because it's stale. And then, if Victor Newman's not there for Stephanie to bounce off of, Stephanie fucking around with other people anyway, so she don't need Victor to feed. Because Roman Reigns and The Rock isn't there, it's like you can't move forward with the, with the bloodline. They're doing the best they can, but you could clearly see something's missing. And when it comes to the Judgment Day, it's like, okay, what... Only The only thing that's hot for the Judgment Day is Rhea Ripley and Liv Morgan. And even that's not fucking hot. Uh, number five, no opportunity. I thought under the Triple H regime, regime it was going to be opportunity on opportunity. I think everybody thought that. Well, baby, it's the same people being cycled every fucking Monday, every fucking Friday. And then you got jobbers in between. The people that are on TV are never on the pay-per-views. The Y6 is working it out on net on the network TV, but they're never on the pay-per-view. And that's supposed to be like this huge big deal. Alpha Academy is not on the pay-per-view. You go over to fucking Raw. The lady, the Big Dick crew and Laura Valkyrie, all them hoes, they're not on the pay-per-views. No more, anyway. Um, people who are just in the back and catering, they don't get no push. Because these people have tunnel vision. 
Number four. Again, Triple H's kids, I call them. Ciampa, Gargano, Hartwell, Lecrae, Loomis, Theory, etc. All get favorites. They stay on TV. And from my understanding, if you're on TV, you get a bump in pay. So maybe he trying to make sure these motherfuckers put food on the table. But don't know why I want to see any of these people. They just show the fuck up. Why is Gargano and Ciampa in the main event for a tag team championship? And then they fucking like, and, and then they don't even take the pin. The fucking Street Profits take the pin. And we actually like the Street Profits. Number three, start and stop in stories. Like I said previously, one minute the person's there, next minute's not. You don't know what's happening. So it's just like, okay, what happened to the, the storyline where a Finn Balor took the room key? They could have did a whole thing with that. He just took the room key. That was the end of it. Or Jimmy just got beat and took it out. And it's just like, okay, what's going on with that? We just got to sit here and wait for him to show up. Now, before you say, yeah, they could have built on that. They could have been putting little Easter eggs. They could have been like people asking for where these people are. It's just like, don't nobody give a fuck. About any of the stories progressing properly. Or they just uh, progress abruptly and then they stop. Number two. Cody is not the guy. We all know it. Listen. I know it. I don't know about nobody else. But Cody just ain't it. Cody has always been a strong middle of the card type of guy. This reign has been abysmal. I've given it all the space it needs to breathe. But Cody literally does the same spiel over and over again. They bro, they bro, uh, bro, I don't know if that's a word. They breathe life back into the bloodline when they added Sami Zayn. Maybe they could breathe life into Cody and ask somebody for him to bounce off on. Because Cody is out there by himself. Don't nobody come out there to help him but Randy Orton and Kevin Owens. And like some jobbers. Don't he got a high profile friend back there? For him to be so cool in his suits and shit, don't nobody come out there and try to be on, on um Cody Rhodes' side. It's bizarre. And don't nobody fight for the fucking belt. Number one, there's no wrestling. Nothing happens on the show. That was something that always happened during Vince McMahon's time, but nothing literally is happening on SmackDown overall. I've been doing reviews. And the, for the last five reviews, well, Raw tonight will be a fifth review. There is nothing for me to report to you. Maybe one or two things funny will happen. I might make it through three hours if I don't pass out or play a video game. But outside of that, there's nothing happening. Nothing progresses. The shows have sucked ass. Almost as if there's no difference between Vince McMahon and Triple H. I'll say this. Um, last but not least, Bruce Pritchard is still there. That's concerning because Bruce Pritchard literally is giving Triple H ideas. And some of those ideas are on TV. Triple H is a student of, of Vincent Mann. That is his father-in-law. He held, holds him in regard. I'm not going to knock him or anything like that. I get it. It's a slippery slope. But if you can't be creative... And come up with some better shit to differentiate you from your father-in-law. That's a big problem. Now, those are my top 10 issues with um, Triple H ever so far. Uh, y'all tell me what y'all think in the comments. I, maybe I'm wrong. You let me know. If you got your top 10 or you see something that you don't like Triple H is doing, sound off in the comments. I'll talk about that too. I'm always looking for content, right? Alright, if you made this far, hit me in the comments.